Today I'll show you five knives that I've ruined. These are the worst knife modifications I've ever done. I'm talking about big mistakes that I totally regret. Kind of like wearing this orange terry cloth shirt or a, how about a sky blue members only jacket? Oh yeah, strap and all. Some of these mods are so bad that the knives aren't even usable anymore. I'm definitely not proud of what I'm about to show you, but I really try not to take everything in life too seriously. I just think that you got to be able to poke fun of and, I don't know, laugh at yourself every once in a while. Hey, how you doing? If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. My name is Jay. Go ahead and click on that subscribe if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. All right, let's kick things off with a CRKT knife. This is the Torea. This knife has been discontinued for a while now. It was one of the first CRKTs that I actually ever got. And at the time of purchase, I didn't realize that it came comes without a pocket clip. Apparently, it's meant to be carried in a sheath, which, of course, I have no idea where it is. But I thought, hey, no big deal. I'll just, uh, I can go ahead and add a pocket clip. I mean, how hard can it be? Keep in mind, I don't own a drill press. And yes, now I do, I do realize that the right way to do this would have been to drill holes through the scales and the liner. I, but I thought that, I thought that if I just screwed the clip directly to the scale only, that that would be good enough. I found some short screws, attached the clip, and thought, oh yeah, this thing is solid. I went to go ahead and put the knife in my pocket, and guess what happened? Yep, the screws and clip popped right off. Kind of like, uh, kind of like the button on my pants, like after a couple McRib sandwiches. So messing up the scale once though, oh no, that wasn't, that wasn't enough for me. I decided, and you can see by the multiple holes, I decided to try again with some brand new holes. At this point, I'm starting to feel a little bit frustrated. So I went ahead and whipped out my best friend. Yep. Gorilla glue. This clip, now that it's glued down with that stuff, it ain't going nowhere now. How much did this mistake cost me? About $40. Ooh, look at this at number four. Yeah, fixed blade. This is from Schrade, and it's the SCHF 36M Frontier. This is a picture of what the knife looked like before I went ahead and modified it. And you can see that the black that the blade was actually black. It had a coating and it was really, it had, a, it was a rough texture, which would create some drag, you know, when you're cutting through stuff, because, you know, I got to be able to do that. Uh, I got to be able to do some speed batoning, right? I started by soaking this in paint thinner overnight. Because I thought then that coating would just simply fall off. Kind of like uh, kind of like barbecue ribs, you know, when they're cooked just right. And then that meat falls right off the bone. So, of course, that didn't, it, that didn't happen. In fact, I think I might have even compromised the blade's structural integrity. I don't know if I caused this or if it was just always there and then I made it visible when I took off the coating. But if you look, yep, you see that right there, right where at the end, at the top of the handle, that is, yeah, that's a good sized crack. So if my goal was to make the surface of the steel uneven and create some divots all over the blade. Oh yeah. Then mission accomplished because I did a fantastic job of that. 
This mistake, this one set me back about $50. Number three, from AG Russell, this is the Folding Gens Hunter 2. All right, here's a picture of what the knife looked like before I did the modification. I was honestly, I was really surprised when I saw the damage I caused on this knife. Because when I first got this, okay, using the, the forward finger choil, it was really, really, it was uncomfortable. I mean, something was kind of poking me whenever I tried to use it. So I thought, hey, you know what? I could easily just go ahead and round it out. Now, do you notice, do you see that little, there's like a little notch, like a little, yeah, it's a little notch there that's actually meant to seat the striker pin you know, to prevent this super broad blade from hitting the backlock assembly. Well, that's exactly the issue that I caused. I honestly, I didn't think I removed that much material. But if you go ahead and look at the halfway point on the edge, yep, right about, yep, right there. Do you see where that little bit of light is kind of reflecting back at you? That's where the blade now is making contact with the back lock. If you're liking this video so far, go ahead and click on that thumbs up. Number two from We Knife Company, this is the Bishop. Here's a nice big picture of the Bishop and I want you to pay attention to that area where, where the sharpening choil is because I fell in love with this knife when I first, when I first saw it after it was announced because it has most of my favorite features that I, that I really like. I mean, bolsters, thicker blade stock. Uh, it's got the multiple Deployment options, just absolutely incredible, incredible action. And a darker stone wash on the blade, two position pocket clip, even M390 blade steel. But there were three things that I didn't like. The flipper tab was a little bit large. Still not crazy about that thumb hole and the fact that there was no forward finger choil. So I thought, you know what? I could, uh, I could fix all of it. Yes. I even thought I could fix the thumb hole. Well, or at least, you know, like flatten it out a little bit on the blade spine. Well, I came to my senses about, about the thumb hole and I didn't even, I didn't even attempt it. I think I did a pretty good job with the flipper, but I removed way too much, I mean, way too much material, which really just shortened the amount of usable edge. Because while I was using my Dremel, I was only focusing on just getting rid of that, of that recurve before I knew it. I created this giant finger choil that, look at that. I mean, you could fit like two fingers in there. Before I show you my number one worst knife modification, I would love to know, are there any knives that you have that you attempted to modify and that you royally jacked up? Go ahead and tell us down in the comments. Number one. It's another Wii knife. This is the Cirrus 615. First, I need to go ahead and I, I gotta apologize to the designer of this knife, uh, Simon Craft. So Simon, I'm sorry. I really, I just jacked up your design. Let, oh, let me show you the before picture, okay? So here is the Cirrus. 
in the closed position, and I want you to really pay attention to that, that flipper tab. My intention was just to make the, that long flipper tab a little bit smaller because I was really worried about this opening up in my pocket. You know, since, since I'm, I'm left-handed, now I can't, even, I can't even use the flipper tab anymore to open the blade. I took off, I made it too small. So now, and there was some jimping on there, but oh yeah, I got rid of that too. Nope, I cannot open the blade that way. Man, I knew, I just knew I should have been a magician because I'm really good at making uh, extra deployment methods. I'm really good at making those disappear. Up on the screen now, you should be looking at a couple of videos. One is a link that will take you to my knife hacks playlist. And what this is, is all of my knife modification videos. You can watch them there. Don't forget to go ahead and click on subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. And I'll see you at the next video. See ya.